Good evening. Thank you so much for coming to the Sashik live streaming. This is Atsushi. Sakura, please stop. She got so excited. I don't know why. Um, let, let me check the audio first. <laughs> Sakura, don't stop that. Let me check the audio first. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, it's probably okay. Um, I'm still working on the microphone, so let me know if it's not good enough, it's not clear, it's not loud enough, please let me know. I think I am doing okay right now. Um, so, let's start. This is the Sashiko live streaming where I stitch and I will talk about Sashiko and surrounding. Sashiko Aishin no ego ban desu. Yoroshiko onegaishimasu. 金曜日の夜の差し子配信日本語版なんですけれども、今日は1時間遅く開始する予定です。え、1時間ぐらいかな。できるだけ30分以内に入ろうとは思うんですけれども、もしかしたら遅くなってしまうかもしれないのでご容
up, but there's so many Japanese words that I would never consider as the fancy word when I was in Japan. One of the things is the kombucha. <laughs> I learned that kombucha is like a healthy food. Kombucha for the. What is kombucha for you? Do, you? do you know what kombucha is? It was sort of a disgusting tea that my grandmas, those sashiko artisans who I worked with, they liked the kombucha a lot. But I hated as a kid. But they always kept drinking that. Drinking and drinking that. I really, really didn't like it. It's kind of salty. Well, of course, it's the tea from the kombu. Kombu is a seaweed. And seaweed is usually salty-ish. So it's like a soup, for that matter. But they don't eat it as the soup. It's just the tea flavored by the seaweed, which is kind of salty. <laughs> so now it became a completely different thing, which is Helen, thank you. The our fermented tea with the by probiotics. That's probably not wrong. There might be some fermentation in the kombucha and there might be some probiotics inside. But that's not the kombucha you can find in Japan. If you go to Japan and if you ask kombucha, you will probably receive completely different thing unless it changed over the last 10 years. <laughs> I found, you know, I have not been back to Japan for 9 years. This is my 10th year. So if something changed in the last 10 years, I apologize. That's probably the Japanese word changing it. But at least my mother is still there and then she does not probably think that kombucha is something completely different. <laughs> wow, so the the first time I tried kombucha in Japan, it was so disgusting. It is, it is very disgusting until you get used to it. Once you get used to it, it's kind of good. It's like a root beer. <laughs> Not a root beer. It's sweet, but it, you know, root beer. I don't, I didn't like it at the beginning, but I love it right now. It's kind of like that. It is not really sweet. In my understanding, it was very, not a belly, but slightly salty. <laughs> Helen, you thought it was from Russia. Wow. It may be. It may be from Russia, but kombucha itself means kombu is the seaweed. Specific type of seaweed, kombu. Cha is tea, so kombucha is, well, maybe Japanese. It tastes like the soup, but I think it's considered as the tea. We sometimes drink it over the, you know, 3 o'clock snack time. We do have a 3 o'clock snack time for kids as well as for adults, especially for elderly people. They really focus, they, they very much appreciate the 3 o'clock <laughs> snack time. Um, our... <laughs> Our company, our business had a, a many, many sashiko artisans and they were very particular about the three o'clock um, taking a break. And taking a break means that they chit chat while eating something sweet and sometimes, you know, just green tea or sometimes the kombucha. And I was there from time to time. No, not, not time, from time to time, most of the time. And if the kombucha is served, I was there. It's hot. I don't know if there's a cold kombucha, kombucha in Japan. So it is okay to... I mean, it's weird for me, but it is kind of okay. Someone made kombucha leather. Leather, leather. That's not even drinkable. And that's how things change. That's how culture change, but <laughs> it is, in my understanding, it's kind of okay. That That's probably the, if we're going to dig into this topic, we probably can reach out to the bigger problem, like, you know, cultural appropriation or word matters, name matters. It does. Uh, it's 
probably important to think about it, but I don't think the kombucha is really not a problem because of two reasons. One, most of the Japanese people know what the kombucha is. They don't really, they don't probably know the change outside of Japan. I will ask them tomorrow. I will ask the Japanese, um, wait, Lidi-san is here. Lidi-san, <laughs> if you are here, um, what is kombucha in Japan right now? Lidi-san is Japanese though. If anybody who understands Japanese here, is kombucha still kombucha in Japan? I will of course ask the same question in Japan, in Japanese tomorrow. But it became a completely different thing in the, you know, probably Western, I can't say Western market. And it is, for me, it is okay at this moment because of the two reasons. One, many Japanese people know what kombucha is. So culture cannot be rewritten by somebody so easily. And second is that I have not heard anyone who is trying to protect kombucha. If somebody Japanese speak up that they don't like it or they would like to protect what kombucha is, I will change my mind and I will help them. I will support the Japanese who like to, you know, talk about, speak about kombucha. But you know, world changes. Sashiko can be whatever we like to make. But that change, I wanted to be more mindful, not by somebody's convenience or ignorance. So kombucha, thank you, Lisa. Kombucha is tea, right? It's not like a healthy drink. Is it healthy drink? So, it's probably different. I will ask tomorrow. And uh, ume kombucha is a completely different story. Thank you so much for mentioning that. Kombucha and ume kombucha is a completely different... <laughs> I mean, it's the same, same category, but taste-wise, it's completely different. It's like a... Root beer versus Mountain Dew. It's gonna take some time to get used to root beer, but you probably can enjoy Mountain Dew right after. At least that was for me. I liked Mountain Dew right after drinking that. It took several time for me to, several years to enjoy root beer. So it's, it's the same category, but it's not the, it's much easier to get used to. But my point is that can any word be so popular outside of Japan? For example, mending is we call hoshu or kakehagi or tsugihagi or any, like we have a lot of word for the mending. Any of the word can be special or romanticized word if the word is picked as the marketing term and that's what is going on right now and sashiko and boro is fortunately picked by them <laughs> lady san thank you so much um she wrote kombu no fumi ga suru ocha matawa chomiryo gawari ni shiyou thank you so much she wrote it down that kombucha is the tea with the kombu flavor kombu is the again seaweed or they can use the kombucha, which is sort of the powder. They can use it as the, not a spice, more like a, some sort of a salt. <gasps> some sauce or some powder to add the taste or flavor to the dishes. So in Japan still it's not the <laughs> like there's a huge difference between the kombucha we know in Japan and the kombucha what it is right now in English. And again, the change is okay and difference is not a big deal. Unless, unless nobody's speaking up about it. If somebody's being painful, if somebody thinks that it's a big problem, then it is a big problem. I just don't know that. And many people know what 
kombucha is, unlike sashiko. Not many people in Japan know what sashiko is at this moment. So that's the difference. And I really like to kind of see how the how do they choose the word sound or is, like wh why kombucha? It's really fascinating how somebody can choose the word to be fancy or sort of like a product name, romanticized for that, without intentionally or unintentionally considering what it is. So... It's really interesting to kind of think about it. So futon in Japan, Japanese futon, like I've been talking about this, but futon is not the futon. Probably you know futon as futon. Futon is not the um, sort of the sofa, which, sofa which can be bed, which can be the bed. That's not the futon in Japanese. You cannot get the sofa in Japan if you ask for the futon. So, it also changed the meaning, and it's probably okay for the Japanese futon industry because they have already very, very st st yeah, structured the culture. I mean, everybody knows what the futon is in Japan. That's the common, common sense. You will not get the sofa bed when you ask for the futon in Japan. Like, that's very... I think that's a very hun almost hundred percent sure, hundred percent um, common sense for anybody who lives in Japan. Um, it may the, about kombucha. It may be called cha, but it is definitely not real tea. Some herb tea. Um, it is closer to the soup. Yes, it's not the soup, but it is closer to soup for the taste wise, and also it can be used for the food. But my point is, it's not the probiotic healthy drinks with fermentation and some other things which is you know the change in japan not in, in change outside of japan when the word traveled cross-culturally they became something else completely and i wonder what is the sort of the criteria to be so huge Japanese might be the one who is changing that purposefully because that's a good marketing technique, right? That's a very good marketing technique to get money. They need something new, so they created something new. So it may be an action of Japanese people's willingness to make money or to get popular or to increase the consumption of kombu i don't know what is the story behind it but until i hear those voice from the japanese who wish to not to have those things i will probably don't consider it as the significant thing but i just really am curious is can any word be some specific like very meaningful word when they travel over cross cultural so <laughs> we have tons of nouns many many nouns right like you know you have english has many many nouns the japanese has many many nouns can it any of those be the fancy word if somebody chooses to do so and if so it's quite scary Probably if the sashiko continue to be in this trend, there are many other words that may follow up to this trend. If they start feeling awkward, awkward to use the word sashiko because of you know what we say, then they will probably find another word to describe what they do, which is fine by me. I cannot, I do not say anything about it because what I care is 
Sashiko and Boro and something related. But there are many, many other words, Japanese words, which can represent mending, repairing, slow fashion, patching. And there are also categorized, I mean, there are also the industries for those specific things. Sashiko is not the industry to mend clothes. There are another industries um, to mend the clothes or to fix the clothes. So probably if they find those words, they will probably start using it if they don't find Sashiko more use useful. I think useful is the word for that. Um, less troublesome. So you might want to kind of pay attention. Kake tsugi hagi. <laughs> what else? Kake tsugi hagi. Nui. Kake tsugi hagi nui. Those kake tsugi hagi nui. Those two words can be combined like kake hagi or tsugi hagi or hagi tsugi. Um, those sound may be featured at some point and introduced as something like Japanese traditional mending word. And it is really interesting to see as a Japanese who did not know about this kind of change until that I comes, you know, until it falls on to me as Sashiko and Boro. I just, you know, don't know. I just would like to know what is the benchmark? Why do they pick so specific word to make it so famous or romanticized without... Like, it, it is completely different thing. The kombucha became completely different thing. And Sashiko is becoming completely different thing from the original. I just... Who is behind it? That's my point. That's my point. Are they doing intentionally? And is it Japanese or non-Japanese? It's, you know, it, it's very, very interesting and curious to see what is going on. Because we can see that, like 30 years ago, because of, we didn't, because we did not have internet, um, when the book defines the answer, that was the answer, that became the answer. When the book is published, it is already the answer there. Right now, book is not necessarily the, always the answer. Of course, it is, you know, much more important than anything like on the blog. Because, you know, publish, publish yeah? the books go through the publish in so many people's eye and ideas. So it has to be, it got to be somewhat valid. So it is, of course, important. I wish I can do that. But that's so the Japan Debun Ket. Debun Ket? I'm sorry if I didn't really correct that. I'm sorry. I don't think it's intentional. Language changes in different cultures adapt word differently. I understand that and I half agree with it. But then I really wonder why they specifically use that word without even knowing what it is. So they probably, somebody went to Japan or somebody has a Japanese friend who offered them kombucha. That's perfectly understandable situation but there gotta be somebody who decided to use that word to make either the product or to be the teacher or to be the somebody so without the internet or even without the if it it happens without the internet or even before that before this, um, how can I say? If this happened more slowly, I understand that it's the change of the word. But because it happens so quick and so 
fast in the marketing perspective. I think there are somebody who is... They don't mean to disrespect the culture, but they focus on something else before the culture itself. Oh, plus, you know, nobody says anything about those things. And probably none of Japanese people care about those things. Not, not none of. 99% of the Japanese people probably don't care about the change. And it is happening. It's as you know, as he said, as she said, it is happening cross cultural. The Japanese also very much adapt the other Jap the English word to the Japanese to the completely different thing. <laughs> so it happens both way. I just wonder why and how. Well. Quite frankly, that's how, that's the, that's the complete, that's the reason I started speaking up. So, it is painful to see Sashiko becoming so different. And I don't accept that. Name matters. And I do not accept the change if somebody is intentionally ignoring the origin. And there are people who is who are ignoring the origin. So it is happening very, very quickly, and probably it was happening like that before, but we can see the change right now very um probably it's clear now because of the internet. And I really wonder, you know, there are tons of known. And there gotta be something, some rules, or some, not rules, some principle behind it. <laughs> something is there, and I really don't know what it is. But it's probably important for me to understand what it is. Just, you know, to... Not to have fun, but to understand what I'm trying to do. Because I have to keep, I will keep fighting back to those who either intentionally or unintentionally trying to change the word Sashiko. And that, that change, that, that goes to the second topic, and which is going to be pretty nasty. But... Nobody owns anything, right, in the cultural context. Nobody owns the word. Nobody owns the cultural context. Culture cannot be owned by anybody. But anybody specific. Culture, for me, is sort of the average of expectations or common sense or, you know, orderly things we think or we do. So culture changes. So average changes. So it is very okay to change it, but it has to be the average or even mean. So, what was I saying? Just a second, what was I saying? So no, nobody owns the culture, so the culture is the average or mean or, you know, those standard deviation of the <clears throat> what we expect. We don't own that. I don't own any of the world, but I think the Japanese people who does not understand the change should know and they should be able to speak up if they have a chance to do so. And we don't own it, but at the same time, it is not free to do whatever they want. There's a big difference between the Nobody's own it, so I can do whatever I want. Versus, nobody's own it, therefore we have to think about it first. And, you know, probably kombucha is gonna be patent at some point as the a trademark, I guess. So, when that happens, let's see how, you know, how the Japanese people react. The one of the biggest 
movement was kimono with the Kim Kardashian, she tried to register the kimono as the word to the um, trademark. And, you know, there was a big movement in Japan to not do it. Until that, probably we don't realize the change. And it was very big change, big action from the big celebrity. So it was very easy to visual visualize it. But things are probably happening not so fast, not so significant like the kimono movement, but more like, you know, but fast enough to change the world. So, you know, it's very important to think and at least learn. In one way, would you consider it adoption a compliment? No, I don't take it as the compliment, especially because I am learning. You know, I don't consider this, I don't consider the sashiko used in the English as the cultural appropriation. But at the same time, as I am reading, I'm trying to learn what the cultural, cultural appropriation to the other people. So in one sense, If there is a possibility of hurting somebody in that culture, I probably do not like it. The reason I say probably is like it's like it, like it or not like it is pretty much my personal, you know, preference. But I don't consider uh, that as the compliment. Some Japanese might consider that as a compliment. Some people really like the Western culture, and if the Western culture pick up, they say, well, well we got it picked. So that's that's a completely different story, but personally, I do not take it as the compliment. What about the people? Yes, yes, of course, the culture is, culture is the sort of average of the people who are there, who is being part of the culture. So Japanese people, of course, can own the culture but it also it is very difficult to define the japanese people right like my is my daughter japanese because she does not speak japanese and she has never been to japan but she can be japanese because she has a registry in japan can we define her japanese some people say yes some people say no so it is very difficult to define what is japanese people so when we talk about the culture, I probably prefer to simplify by saying that it's the sort of average of the, well, average of the people, so it's of course the people, uh, but owning is kind of too big of the word. So they don't, Japanese people do can, I mean can, they can, or they can of course own it, but at the same time they really have to understand what they're trying to own. Oh, but sometimes I don't think anybody should own the culture. Culture is the almost like a result, not the property or some tangible things. Yeah, well, I think it's the result. So yes, so for example, the kombucha, if the kombucha becomes completely different, and if that movement is happening within Japan, in Japanese culture, I think it's the change. It's perfectly fine. Same as sashiko. If the sashiko is becoming the mending technique, and if it is happening in Japan, involving many, many, many Japanese people, then there's no issues with what's going on right now. But I don't think the Japanese people understanding it, or they don't have even chance to speak up because it, it is happening in English. Those who can speak English, like me, have opportunity or even power to do so. But even if somebody wants to speak up, if they don't understand the English, or if they are not familiar or comfortable jumping into this culture of sort of a dualism, like logical discussion, then... It is very risky to define who owns it. So, nobody can own the patterns, nobody can own the design, unless 
you know, you have to sort of. That's another thing about art and you know design. We have a in the intellectual, yeah, intellectual property. And also the trademark and all the things protected by law, and it, the legal system is extremely important to keep our life sane. I don't want to say sane or insane, but it is very important to keep our society functional. But at the same time, sometimes culture is outside of the legal system, especially cross-culturally. So yes, I mean, my point is that if things are the world are changing, the cultures are changing within the people who are there, or even involving the people there. <laughs> if the people know about kombucha being the healthy drink, that's I have nothing. And at the same time, I have nothing wrong with the kombucha right now because I don't. Have that much relationship with the kombucha. I wish the kombucha will be kombucha in Japan, but it's not gonna be that significant for me. So unless I hear somebody's voice, I will not speak for them. But for sashiko, I am speaking up because of that. So it is. I used to be more. Happy person, I guess, <laughs> and I wish I could be more. I was not caring those things at all when I was in Japan and when I was working as the sashiko artist or no sashiko somebody. Like I was making a business out of sashiko, right? I was supporting not only myself but some life of employees there. So business was more important for me than the culture itself. So. I probably am the one who changed a lot of culture in Sashiko too, and probably some Japanese people didn't like it. And things changes; it's perfectly fine.、Um, there are probably those who decide who war against me, not me or us. <laughs> I was very young back then. Now, as for the changes, they did not like. And it is happening. It is happening everywhere in Japan, in many many topics. It's not only Japan, and I mean Sashiko, but that's how we sort of do not define one answer. We kind of leave it as is, to not to completely define one answer. And Sashiko was that too. Has been very much remained undefined. Now it is. It has a very specific meaning. Um, of what sashiko is and what pro is. One of the things I have to do in the workshop recently, especially this 2022, after I restarted the workshop, I sometimes not sometimes. To some people, I have to sort of uninstall their understanding of sashiko first, because they have very specific understanding of sashiko. Before you know, they learn what sashiko is in English first, so. They suffer the most. The more they know about sashiko, the more they suffer, and that's something sort of increasing in last few years. And this year is very significant. So, and probably it's gonna be like that, unfortunately. So one day the Japanese people will accept that change. Happening in English, and they will learn what sashiko is as the materials coming from the Western world. One of the example is reiki. For that, the Japanese reiki, jikizen reiki, is not the majority of reiki in Japan. Most of the reiki practiced in Japan or even outside of Japan are、um, sort of Western reiki, which is very, very well organized, very much defined. There is the you know way to practice the reiki, structured certifications there. But it is the they have the word for that, teo reiki or reiki. But I think I'm not a professional. I'm not really you know I haven't studied reiki that much. So it might be 
too much word to say that, but I think it is too dangerous to say that the Reiki introduced in English right now is the whole picture of the Reiki the Japanese people practiced before, let's say World War II, a few generations ago, let's say 200 years ago, 300 years ago, probably it's not going to explain the whole. And Sashiko is joining in that. So, you know, that's what I'm saying. The Sashiko introduced in English is not wrong, but insufficient. Oh, I, I received the comment. I forgot to reply that. Thank you so much for the comment. If you, if that person is here, I received the comment that saying insufficient is aggressive or not. And I asked the question, like, <clears throat> this is the phrase I keep saying, like, Sashiko introduced in English is not wrong, but insufficient. And there was the... Um, th that was the there was a comment or even advice from somebody who support me very much. She said that be careful sometimes the insufficient can be very aggressive word, like the same as saying no or denying and I did not know that, and I did not I still don't feel like that, although I'm not an English professional, I'm not English but as long as I can feel from my experience, insufficient is insufficient, and I don't know how else. Something missing, but that's really the same, right? So I asked the question, is insufficient is kind of strong or aggressive word? And there was a comment that it was, it's not really aggressive so much. Of course, it's not a really comfortable word. Um, but yeah, so it's not sufficient. It is very difficult and dangerous, and very violent for that matter, to define the whole picture, whole culture behind the word without learning the language. So, because, you know, that's going to destroy the change of the average people there. You gotta learn the Japanese culture and language to understand, to even to lead, to initiate the change. That's probably the word, initiate the change. Initiate? To, I don't, I, mean, I don't think it's leading, but they are trying to activate the change. It's like yoga and pajama from India. Probably so. I'm not a big, you know, I do not know about yoga too much. Um, but many people use yoga as the example of what's going on. Yoga is not about touching toes, but touching toe is important part of yoga. And then you know that that kind of that discussion led to the sort of another discussion. Does name matters so much? Why don't they create another name? And if they can create another name. That's perfectly fine too. So, like the running stitch existed everywhere, everywhere. <laughs> everywhere, everywhere. Sorry, I was reading. I was reading the comment. That was a very good comment. I'm sorry. I laughed. For me, insufficient is only aggressive when I hear it from the ATM. It's not only aggressive, it's very scary and so violent and also depressing and that's the last thing I'd like to hear from. <laughs> well, I've, I've, I've done that before. And I, when I was a student, I could, I, you know, there's a check that it returned. It was bad. <laughs> that was bad. That was bad. So yes, people are the core material, core essence, core element of the culture. <laughs> I completely forgot. I, I lost my line. Ali, what was I saying? Everywhere. Everywhere, everywhere. I, I was talking about something everywhere and I completely forgot about it. God, that was a very good one.
<laughs> it, it triggered my memory. I don't wanna go, go back there. Like, you know, I can end my mid. <laughs> I don't think I have... I don't... I don't... No, it's not gonna happen. My... Our bank... I don't have my bank... Personal bank account. It's joint account. That bank account will never be insufficient. No, it's not gonna be insufficient because I check all the expenses, although I don't make income. My wife doesn't care. Uh, she makes money, so I think we're not gonna experience that anymore, but I did experience that and it was very scary. And it is very true. That's very aggressive. Oh, sorry, running stitch is everywhere. <laughs> Thank you so much, Katie. So running stitch is everywhere, right? Like, yeah, like sing, every single culture has running stitch. Running stitch. Like, any, any, any stitching can be running stitch too, for that matter. Like, define running. They don't really stitch while running. Well, they can, of course, stitch while running outside. That's a very good way to lose my weight. How can I lose? That's a that's a fantastic way. But but I'm gonna lose it again. So <laughs> running stitch exists everywhere. So it is impossible and it's insane to say that running stitch is only for all the Japanese people or Japanese sashiko. It's it's insane. Of course not. We're not talking about those things. We're not saying that running stitch is for the Japanese or Japanese culture only the running stitch. It's the name behind it. Sashiko is the Japanese word for the running stitch. And the very big difference between the running stitch in other culture and the running stitch as Sashiko is the culture, the people behind it. Happy Katie. That's good. That's a good rhyme. Rhyme. Rhythm. Rhyme. My daughter is, my daughter is, I don't know if she's trying to be a rapper or something, but she tried to keep those phrases. She's seven. I, th I think she got into that for some reason. There's a big problem though. I don't understand those. <laughs> I don't know if I can understand the rap music in English. The stand-up comedy is kind of my boundaries that I can understand. I can enjoy the stand-up comedy. Love rap. I can probably understand Eminem. M M Eminem. 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 But anyway. So running stitch. Running st like san konbanwa. Hello. Thank you so much for coming. Running stitch exists everywhere. So... Some people ask, like, what is the difference between the kanta and the sashiko? And, uh, you know, Indian people say, like, well, that's called kanta. And Japanese people say, like, that's called sashiko. There's no difference between. It is just the running stitch happened in India. And the running stitch happened in sashiko. I mean, in Japan. That's the only, and that's the significant difference. Because of that difference, the word itself carries some of the very, very important part of the culture. Here, I don't talk about counter because I'm not an Indian or I don't know almost anything about Indian culture. Uh, but there are something, there should be something significant as the Indian culture. That's why I keep saying the name matters and that's why it is very, very important to understand the culture before they teach. Again, if your goal is to just enjoy Sashiko, forget about everything I said. Please start just enjoying stitching. Um, because that's just simple stitching, simple running stitch. You don't have to worry about the wording or cultural appropriation too much. Especially because you are here, you're trying to learn what sashiko can be for the Japanese people. And that's that's all I ask for now, unless some big things happens. But there are people who try to ignore that. Because it's inconvenient. And that's gonna lead to the my definition of cultural appropriation culture cannot be appropriated nobody can own the culture so nobody can borrow the culture nobody can you know appropriate means like probably borrow or but they can retain the culture 
they can redo the culture, they can sort of repaint, they can skim it, they can simplify it. Because their main target do not understand Japanese language, or even they don't have that much interest in the culture or stories behind it. They just need the result, outcome, technique, definition. Probably kombucha is too. <laughs> Probably kombucha is a little different because they are selling it as the healthy food, healthy drink. It is more business oriented. It has a very specific theme. But that's the whole purpose of this live streaming. That's the whole purpose of me stitching in front of the camera. That's the whole purpose of me, you know, sharing the stories. Uh, but <laughs> unfortunately, it's a very unfortunate thing, but you who are here are not the one who I would like to speak up about this. Many people come to me worrying that if they are doing something sort of aggressive or you know, they ask me if they are disrespectful or not, right? Like, they they, they very much worry about, um, you know, doing the cultural appropriation and you know, they really would like to make sure that how to be respectful. And my answer is pretty simple. If you worry about that, don't worry about it. Like, really, don't worry about it. But if you don't worry about it, then please do worry about it. If you think you don't know anything about Sashiko, that's... You know about Sashiko a little bit. So, that's a very ironic... Not ironic, that's a very difficult part of this issue is because the people who are interested in Sashiko and trying to learn more are not the people who I'm tra talking about. Which condition have to be fulfilled to make something authentic, Sashiko, for you? I think the authenticity is already <coughs> a very definition of the Western or even dualism mindset. I don't really have any authentic Sashiko in my understanding. It does not, there's no criteria to define, to be defined as the authentic. As long as it is done by someone who are either Japanese, well, which, of course, we have to define who can be Japanese, but anybody who... Any sashiko stitching, if they want to call it sashiko, and done by Japanese or who lives in Japan, who can speak Japanese language altogether, who is the part of the culture, I think it's authentic. It does not have to be traditional patterns or traditional way, tra you know, the colors. That's subcategory. Who is changing, who is doing it, will define if it's authentic or not. So, I don't know if you speak Japanese fluently, or, but I think you're living in Japan. So if you decided to call your stitching sashiko, and if you are caring to keep learning what sashiko can be by talking to somebody else besides me in Japanese, because there are gotta be a lot of things that you can learn in Japanese. What I'm doing is pretty much sharing my experience happening happen in English, in Japanese into English. I'm not creating any stories. I'm just rewriting everything from my memory. So any kinds of sashiko can be authentic. Some people, not me, some people um, think that one specific sashiko is not authentic. Or even they don't consider that as sashiko. In Japan, you know, some Japanese elderly people, uh, I have heard their voice, they're complaining. They're not complaining, they're pure message, they're pure concern that some of the things which co is considered as the sashiko by Japanese people are not sashiko. Like hanafukin, 
I probably talked about it before, but some, some, uh, two at least, two people in Japan I know who has the Instagram account and who has enough energy to message me um, told me that Hanafkin is not Japanese sashiko. Well, that's a bit too much for me. I don't think that's the Japanese. <laughs> Well, if the Japanese people decided that's not sashiko, then that's a different story. But for me, it's, it's the normal, it's the reasonable change over time. But then I don't quite understand why you worry about cultural appropriation. I am not worried about cultural appropriation. I am worried about the culture being repainted by somebody completely outside. Like, for example, let's say an American who does not speak Japanese, who has not been to Japan, yet teaching sashiko. I do not consider it as a cultural appropriation. That's cultural changing on purpose. If they don't know what sashiko is, then that's a completely different... It's, it's, it's kind of worse, for that matter. But I think over the internet, they can learn what Sashiko is. At least now there are so many resources. 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, there were not that many resources in English. So it is understandable. But right now it's... I mean, if you are new, if they are new to Sashiko, if they found out Sashiko like a few days ago, that's a, again, that's another different story. But if there's anything cultural appropriation or any difficulties or any problems in culture right now in Sashiko, and the reason I'm speaking up is not the authenticity. It's not that. There are some Japanese who also come to Japanese live streaming, they do not want to change some of the very, very important part of Sashiko. But they don't understand, they don't know what is going on in English. And I would like to ask you and many other people who are caring enough to learn what Sashiko is, to learn who you are learning Sashiko from. They might not know anything. They might not. They might know some. But let's say that if if they say like they learned sashiko from somebody who learned the sashiko in Japan by Japanese, but they don't speak Japanese, that's already the second information. There's nothing wrong with that unless they explain what they learned. Like, I learned Sashiko from this person or this, you know, course, and I'm teaching this with understanding that there's a limitation. I don't care. I don't, I don't care. It's a little bit different word. That, then that's okay. That's the appropriate change. That's a reasonable change. And everybody has a right to teach if they want to. But that cannot be the whole picture of Sashiko. That cannot be the defining definition of Sashiko because that is the separate that's more like a privilege we i we have a privilege right the english is a very strong language and it has the power to repaint some of the culture completely make something different so i like the whole purpose of this sharing the sashiko almost freely is asking the audience same people same people with the many, same category of people, same people who has the similar privilege to help us. See, that, that's going to be the answer. So what's the definition of Sashiko? That's very much Western mindset. Why do they ask for the definition? Like, if they are, if I say like, you know, there is no definition, Definition varies. There are definitions. There are my definitions. But that's not the definition of the culture. So that's the Western mindset. That there should be always the answer. There should be always something to 
you know, format. So she couldn't have that. Of course, I do have my own definition, and you know, I keep saying that everywhere. So, without definition, we cannot go further. But that's not something I should teach. I should, I will teach, and I'm teaching how to get the their own definitions. But there's a big difference between sort of teaching the easy definition. And also the teaching the way or mindset or technique or practice form to reach the <clears throat> so i'm I'm really asking very, very difficult thing not a, not for those who like to learn what sashiko is it's not really difficult. For those who like to get a very quick answer, it's very, very difficult. I like the first thing I really probably will ask, not a probably, the, the first thing I ask in the workshop is to give up the Western mindset for that, at least for that workshop. That's a very, very important first step to understand what sashiko really is, really can be for the Japanese people. And this does not require any explanation when I teach in Japanese. That's, that's the difficult part of the culture, culture, cross-cultural thing. That's why my workshop in Japanese is two hours short. I don't have to explain that common sense. But, well, I'm happy to teach those things, and many people enjoy that. <laughs> Are you reading? Or, like, is, is this first time for you to come this workshop? I mean, this live streaming? If there is no definition, that's difficult to say that word is used wrong. I did not, I never say it's wrong. It's just insufficient. It's not enough. I never say that the word is used wrongfully. Wrongfully. It is just not enough. There's a big difference between wrong and not enough. Yeah, there's a huge difference between wrong and not enough. So wrong is not my message and I probably have not said it that anywhere. If you find it, please let me know. I make sometimes make a mistake. I I got confused. We are your student. So pre presumably sorry I couldn't say that. Presumably we are not learning in the wrong place. What is the wrong place? What, what, like what is the wrong place to learn Sashiko? The, the, the people who teach Sashiko in English, I do not define what they do as wrong. You are not going to be learning something wrong by taking somebody who teaches Sashiko in English. They are not wrong, because I don't know them. I cannot define their wrong without knowing that. I cannot criticize if how, they, how much they are wrong. So I don't know, and they might be wrong, but I don't think there is such a thing as wrong Sashiko. So I, because of my belief that there's no such a thing as right and wrong in Sashiko, I say it's insufficient. Because the, the reason I can define that and I can, conf I can uh, determine that it's insufficient is because they do not probably understand the Japanese language. Or they probably have not been to Japan. And again, probably you get confused. I'm not saying you have to learn... 100% or the whole picture of Sashiko to practice Sashiko. If you want to just enjoy it, don't worry about it. Just, you know, keep stitching, enjoy stitching. If you want to call it Sashiko, go ahead. What I'm saying is, if they're going to start teaching, if you start teaching, if you start saying that you know enough about Sashiko to, you know, teaching, of course, for the money is more, resp more it carries more responsibility, but 
because it's, you know, you're going to take money. But for those opportunity to share those stories, like f to your friends, to your family, that's also sort of re like I know uh, the sashiko this much, so my sashiko is limited to this people's amount of knowledge. So this is what I can share. That's that's perfectly fine. But there's so much definition already in sashiko, and they're not again wrong, but not enough. Sorry, it's hard to wrap my head around why it hurts you if people use the word sashiko for their artwork because of the cultural appropriation. Because it's changing. It's changing by somebody who does not know the whole picture. Um, the best analogy I use is that pizza. Um, I don't know if you like pineapple on the pizza. I don't, I'm sorry to say, I don't personally like the pineapple on the pizza. Um, somewhere outside of the culture, they're saying that pineapple on the pizza always have to have pineapple on that. And that's the culture they define, that's the answer they define. They don't talk about the possibility of not having pineapple and adding the jalapeno or pepperoni. They just define that pizza has to have the pineapple. Everything else is not pizza. Pizza has to have pineapple. That's not enough to completely explain the memory of my pizza. I have a very important memory of the jalapeno pizza. Probably the first date was with jalapeno pizza. Those kind of stories. So it completely changes that by those who does not know the taste of the pizza with jalapeno. Or pepperoni for that matter. I mean, again, this is the analogy. So pineapple, pizza on the pineapple, defined as the answer in completely different how country or culture, is not wrong. That's, like, again, pizza on the pineapple, pineapple pizza is not wrong at all. But if we define that, if one person without understanding the whole picture, defining that as the only one culture, only one answer, then, don't you think it's too much? Um, please, 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 please keep learning what Sashiko is for us. If you are here, your understanding is, well, like, what is the sufficient, right? Sufficient is the very... I, I don't think I know Sashiko enough to say that I know Sashiko sufficiently. But your Susan's wondering is the key to here. Like, I am trying to more is the... sort of the medicine or even the key. It's a silver bullet. Silver bullet that so as long as you are worrying about it your learning will be at some point sufficient and who define what is sufficient not you so if you took my workshop you did you if you took my workshop you know that the sashiko itself is not about technique, right? Sashiko, the word sashiko is not for the technique. So the, the understanding, the vision, the mindset that there's always the right answer is already outside of the culture. So you are here to learn something, and I don't really give you the answer because there's no such a thing as the answer. But keep learning is all I ask, and that will be sufficient at some point. But if you don't know me, if you don't care, if you don't decide to not to learn more, then that sashiko, <laughs> the message I'm saying, the sashiko introduced in English right now is not wrong, but insufficient, is not the message for you.
for anybody here because you know that it's not sufficient. And I am trying to fill that gap from my perspective. But there, there are people who think that it's sufficient without talking to Japanese people, learning from Japanese. That is the problem. You're not the problem. You are, I mean, ideally, 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 I hope you can doubt me so you can talk to the other Japanese sashiko artisans who probably cannot speak English. So that's my another responsibility to, to bring them, translate is a little difficult word, but to try to let you and them communicate. So that's the better, more, more sufficient way to share what sashiko is. But as long as you try to keep learning, Which workshop did you take, Susan? Can you email me? Was it online Sashiko class? Did you take the live session then? I'm sorry if, if, if I'm completely misunderstanding. I apologize. Some of the workshop, like online class itself is not. If the Sorry, if you if you could email me, um, if you took my online class, you should have my email address, and if you have the if you took my workshop in person, you should re have received the follow up email. So you can um, email me that because I give you the biggest hint in the workshop. to find your own Toshiko. If you took my class in the Jap Japan society, that's the only exception because that was a very... My birthday is in New York City. Good. So please email me. Please email me so I can, I probably did not, oh, I think I remember you. Was it from the loop of the room? You know the, how running stitch work, how unshin works. Wait, did you come to the workshop a few, minutes, a few hours late? By is that you? Probably? By any chance? Thank you, Divi Divion. Divion, Divion. I'm sorry. Divion is the Divion summarized this. Yes, the concept seems fluid because it's oral, I think. It's not something framed. And there are many, many answers as people who practice it in the culture. That's it. So it is very disrespectful if I give you the answer and if you follow me. I don't want you to define that. Oh, so if, if you were late, yeah, um, if you were late, we skip the most important, well, I mean, She was your table, okay. You were not late, okay. But um, please email me. I will follow up. <laughs> Along with the lady who had so much dramas, um, um, okay. I'm not gonna say that anything about it. So just give me the f email. So I will follow up. There's a little bit something missing as long as I can answer, as long as I can see. Okay. 
Lear, Lear, Leah, sorry, I skip your message. I am a graduate student who study the culture and understand what you are saying. You are saying if we have a respectful atti attitude and we do not own the control the concept. Yes, 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 that's, that's it, that's, that's the good summary. But it's still also Western minds a little bit there. Does not have to be respectful. Like respectful is more like you know. I mean, <laughs> it it might be it might be too much to say. It does not have to be respectful. It's more like the willingness. Like they don't have to respect it. They just. Mm, well, probably in that case, respect is the way to say it. But there's so many answers or so many definitions of sashiko already. It's probably more than you can find in Japanese. What is the definition of sashiko? And then probably there are more definitions in English than the, the ja definition in Japanese. You don't have to call your stitching. At the end of the workshop, I say that you can call your stitching sashiko if you want to. If you want to. If you want to. If you don't feel comfortable, you don't have to. And But probably there are still something missing. What was the missing part? I'm going back to the comment. It would be helpful to share more posts. Sashiko is instead of what Sashiko is instead of what? Did you get my presentation? No, I'm talking to Susan. I'm sorry, Susan. Do you get my presentation? The understanding of Sashiko will never be sufficient. Please know that. Um, that's the start. Because we have choice. I try to deepen my understanding of Sashiko by learning from other Japanese people, but we have choice. We cannot really 100% understand what Sashiko is because we live in a different world, different society different, very different people. So it's really, really difficult to say that I know enough. But we can try, right? We can try to imagine that. And especially when I teach, I teach that this is not the answer. <laughs> I define Sashiko in the beginning of the workshop, but I say that it is not the universal answer for you. And I teach how to use the, I mean, I teach the technique to understand, to keep practicing what Sashiko is. So nothing can be sufficient. And I'm saying that I, my Sashiko is not sufficient. This is not sufficient. At all. But it has more message than the Sashiko you may learn from some people who think that they are sufficient or they say that that's the whole picture of Sashiko like you can stop learning by you can stop learning by learning Sashiko from me that's a completely different thing Well, I'll follow up regardless if <laughs> there are tons of problems, like, 
if you have the follow-up material, like just find the follow-up email. There's tons of things there already. So if you don't remember the follow-up email, please go there and there are um, a lot of things that you can follow, you can review after that. Sorry. Yeah. I am sorry, I'm coming late. Sorry, Leah, I'm just asking, uh, reading this. I'm coming late. What are you making? Is it part of something bigger? Um, I am not making anything. I'm just stitching. <laughs> well, I mean, this is the part of the project of uh, 100 meters of sashiko. So I'm stitching this pattern for 100 meters. And I don't know what I'm going to be. I don't know what's going to be like. But this is, you know, <laughs> there's no, there's no, there's no end picture. I know I'm going to stitch 400 meters, but that's about it. That's the information I can... Not even I can share. That's the only information I know. Um, respect can mean only it, respect can mean only the mindness and willingness to understand with help preconceptions that may be like an anthropological standpoint I, I let me read that again respect can mean also mindfulness and willingness to understand without preconceptions that's prob that's I think I'm understanding, but yes, yes, uh, so respect is a, you don't have to really, you know, there's, there's no high or low or superior or inferior. We are on the same page to learn what Sashiko is, right? I'm, try, I'm still trying that. I don't know the full picture. So... I just want you to choose who you would like to learn what Sashiko is from those who has been learning, although the one who has almost all, all the criteria to call themselves master. I don't consider myself master. They, organizer, use the word master to advertise the workshop and I cannot say no. I don't say no because the definition of the master in English is different from the definition that I have. And I am advertising that in the English. Or somebody who thinks that Sashiko can be that simple without even going there. So, respect is really, of course, respect is great, but. <laughs> Anthropological. Mm. Helen, which part did you agree? Anthropological? But probably that's what I'm talking about. After all. After all, that's what I'm talking about. The one of the definitions, no, one of the definitions, one of the explanation of my Sashiko, the Sashiko we practice is the ordinary, right? I hope it's gonna click the Susan's uh, brain. Ordinary. Ordinary is very the key for the Sashiko we practice. So, oh, in order to understand what ordinary is, probably anthropological perspective is important. So probably that's the, if I understand it right. So willingness to understand is the key. Yes, that's the key. Uh, that kind of completes. <laughs> But that's a very big division between like I would like to learn more versus I don't care because this is what I like that's that's a huge division there that that gap is you know that's big <laughs> and all I'm saying is that if you are trying to learn your sashiko will be sufficient at some point with your own definition. 
from somebody else. Your sashiko may not be sufficient, but you find your own one at some point, and you can call it however you want. But that's not because of somebody's definition or somebody's answer. So one has to really give up the... Like, we judge, we really criticize the stories we hear. So my stories might be very, very confusing because I am not speaking from the Western logical point. There is no thesis, there is no point for that matter. But that's my challenge. I would like to talk as if I am speaking in Japanese. I know how easy it is for me to speak <laughs> about this culture the way you would understand much, much easier. I offer the definition, I offer the thesis statement, and I will explain the example and I will conclude it. If I do it, you'll get this, what sashiko is within 30 minutes or so. But that's not gonna define the sashiko I know. And the Japanese people can, in the Japanese language, we, I may be able to do that without those system in 30 minutes because we shared another ex expectation. But as long as I am explaining that in English, there are, there is ways to make it much, much more simple and that's what the publishers want and that's what I disagree. But that's not gonna, if, then if I say that's complete, many people think that it's complete. It's not. So that, that's the most difficult part of this journey that I cannot and I do not give the answer or definition because that's my definition, that's my answer and that cannot be the universal answer. The Western mind, I'm sorry, the Western mind and Eastern mind are very really different and it makes it challenging to clear communicate to one another but it's always good to try yes i want to try um it is very difficult trust me i married to jewish people it's very difficult to understand fully each other but the trying is the key like m m many people like i don't want to say many people but many people probably judge my story as the um, sort of mumbling <laughs> or some people even probably consider me as the mean person to not to offer the answer i i received several several um, not aggressive comment but several comments that i am very mean because i don't answer the question well because your question is not really the form of the like if i answer the question from the western style then i am already on your field in order to answer the question i have to accommodate what i'm doing in English, right? But the truth is not really in English. And I'm trying my hard, I'm trying my best so hard to make it happen in English. So I really want you to listen to the pretty much all of the live streaming if you are really wishing to learn. Or even like read my Instagram that by sharing as many stories my live streaming as possible, I'm trying to illustrate the not the answer, but illustrate the boundaries around. And it's not easy. It's really not easy. And if you can read, understand, talk Japanese, please come to the Japanese live streaming and ask the same question again there. I can answer you there, right there. Without worrying about um, framing my answers, my reply in English. Like, language is very difficult. But 
please, please make sure that your Japanese is sufficient as my Jap, my English. Because what, what I'm going to say in Japanese can be quite Japanese. I like the person require like, it requires the people to read between lines. <laughs> that was a very funny thing. The previous live streaming Japanese, I said that the ghost. Um, I, we were talking about something like spiritual spirit, and we kind of <laughs> talking about the ghost, and it's the topic if I believe in ghost or not. Right, like ghost, ghost, spirit, ghost. And my answer is that ghost can exist, but it does not exist. But it does not exist, but it will exist. No, I'm sorry, that's not what I said. Iru kedo inai, inai kedo iru. It exists, but it doesn't. It, it doesn't exist, but it does. Ooh. And it, it does not make sense at all. Right? I, I'm, I'm really not what I'm... I don't really understand what I'm saying. But... Inai kedo iru, iru kedo inai. Makes sense <laughs> in Japanese. Many people, not many, several people. Okay, so many iru kedo. Just, 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 Without this is kind of okay. I'm, oh, thank you, thank you for the good. I don't thank you for the lot of good buttons. I really appreciate that. So to answer the question, I usually do not answer the questions that I already answered. Uh, but do you think the sashiko can only be taught by Japanese people? Mm, depends on how we define the Japanese people. But it really is. We have to define what Japanese people. But yes and no to that question. <laughs> See, I'm already I'm not answering the question, and probably some people are like na 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 na. So. I don't I don't think only Japanese people can do sashiko or teach sashiko. For that matter, being sash being Japanese doesn't qualify the person to teach sashiko neither. I mean, you know, I don't worry about sashiko in Japan by practice by Japanese people, but it does not mean that being Japanese can be good enough to teach sashiko, right? It's it's another perspective. So, it's a different world. Another world, different angle. So I, I will stop after this uh, one stitch. Yep, I think I covered all of the comment. It is extremely difficult to explain that <laughs> and I'm trying I'm trying my best the reason I'm doing this is my my daughter will come to understand no come to find that how messed up her father's culture is and she is not willing to listen to my <laughs> you know my stories right that's healthy father-daughter relationship but at some point, probably she will wonder what she is and how she is, where she is from. So that's the time I would like to make sure that I have left enough stories. I only found your YouTube channel today. Ooh, I was delighted to learn you were doing English live streaming. Oh, thank you so much for coming. Well, my goal is to just share it, so not define or not even correct. It's just adding 
so that the people who are not familiar with Japanese culture, Japanese language, or Japanese people can learn what sashiko is. Not to be sufficient, though. Not to be sufficient. To understand enough to be okay with being insufficient. Do you mind if I ask, is your daughter learning Japanese? We tried, but she is not learning Japanese right now. The first reason is that the main conversation, we main language we use in the family is English. So that's that's first reason. Second reason is that um, the Japanese is kind of the least not important, but least required. Like altogether, our family speak four languages: English. On my wife's side, actually three: Russian, Hebrew, and Ukrainian. Ukraine, 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 Ukrainian, and Japanese. Right. So she has to go through five languages, technically speaking. If we can cut it into Hebrew and Japanese, or Russian, probably. And she goes back to Israel every year before the COVID, obviously. So it was probably more making sense to learn. Hebrew or Lord Russian first. Um, but I was stay at home dad until two years old. So she used to speak or understand a bit of Japanese, but not anymore. And the third reason, this is more honest, probably answer to your question, we had to survive. <laughs> and my wife and I talk a lot. Let me rephrase it. I listen to her a lot. She talks to me a lot. And we have like uh, one hour or two hours, you know, family talking time. And unfortunately, this is this can be bad, but unfortunately, my daughter is not the center of the conversation. We ask, of course, her how she is doing, how was her day. We have those times, but at the same time, we try to have more time. Or she can join the conversation, but that's all happening in English. And her school is happening in English, too. So... I will wait until she really, really say that she would like to learn Japanese. It's a very, very big commitment to teach the language because one parent can speak. It has to have some sacrifice, unfortunately, and we could not afford that sacrifice for this time. And I, I know many people say, well, it's a big loss. Well, yes, it's a big loss, but at the same time, we have to choose. So she does not speak, or she, well, she probably knows a little bit. But, like, a little bit, it's very much a little bit. She does not speak to me in Japanese. But I, we tell her that whenever she's ready to learn another language, we are here to help. <laughs> but she chose Spanish, which I cannot help at all, but that's her choice. Daddy, I decided to learn Spanish. Like, okay. Okay, so do I have to learn Spanish too? After Russian and Hebrew and Ukrainian, I now have to study Hebrew, I mean, Spanish for you. Anyway, um, w once she is in interested in Jap Japanese culture or well, I gotta take her to Japan first, probably. That's the priority. So she might change her mind. Oh, sorry. So yes, I talk about this kind of things every Thursday night, <laughs> and I will usually, well, usually answer pretty much all the questions, but if the chat becomes quite, you know, not aggressive, busy, uh, I try to answer the questions that I have not answered. There are lots of information by now. Thank you so much for the many questions last 
five years, I have. It's it's interesting, but I st all the questions are really good questions. That's why I'm answering everything. But nobody asked me what kind of thread we use, or what kind of needles we use, what kind of fabric, what is the what is the answer for the size of stitches. Those are. Those were the questions I used to have, but I stopped receiving those questions. When is the next in-person class? That's a very good question. I don't know. I mean, I do know, but not in 2022 for now. Um, I tried to be... Well, the next one is... In 2023 February in Atlanta, QuiltCon is the one next one. Um, the other workshop in New York is unknown. You can ask the loop of the room, loop of the room, loop of the room, the place I offer the workshop in July. Um, if she asks me, I will very much considered to have that there. But besides that, I'm trying to slow down as much as I can. It takes a lot of energy and, you know, yeah, there's, <laughs> there's a lot of risk, risk too. So I try to slow down as much as I can so I can focus on stitching. I just realized that stitching for 100 meter is kind of insane. I just realized now I'm so stupid, but you know, 100 meter is a little bit insane, so it takes a little bit of time. But yeah, I will try to, s I am very much focusing on slowing down on the business side. Like teaching is, you know, my business, like income wise, income wise, I am slowing down now. I wish I could make more, but sometimes. Why I don't have to? I have to. Oh, oh, yeah, there are a lot of things happening in the like last two years, three years because of the COVID, but, you know, the things are getting easy a little bit. Do you offer private Zoom? I can, but the online such class comes with the private too, though. So starting from the scratch in the online 101 is kind of... I wouldn't say the waste of time, but that's not the key. I want the students to learn the not a basic, but something that they can learn and practice by themselves. Some people require like it might take some for some people take two hours. Sometimes people get it in thirty minutes, and. Some people appreciate the time between the like videos and the live session because they could have time, like a few weeks, to practice that. So, but I will. The online session class only complete when I see you in person. Sometimes private, sometimes two or three people. But that's the way I. It's not going to be like, I'm, I'm going to give you the link of the videos and you watch and you're going to be fine. That's not the live online class I offer. Of course, you have to, you know, I'm not going to force you to take the live stream, live session. So you have to be active. But, um, but again, if you like to have it from the scratch, I will consider it, but it's going to be, you know, cost you. I do offer the online class. It's more like the... Um, video. I, I recorded the video explaining the essence and core and essence. I define. I, I name it the core and essence. And uh, yeah, I <laughs> I you can you can learn the core and essence in the videos. And but you know, watching the video sometimes can fulfill the learning, but usually not because. There's a big difference between the Western mindset and the Eastern mindset. That's 
today's conversation, the live streaming is all about. And it's not that easy to match it by just watching the video and practicing. I mean, it might help. It will. Somebody will find that out. But in order to kind of adjust it here, and also to make sure that it, everybody has a different hand, so I'd like to make sure that everybody has the same understanding. That's where live session kicks in. And yeah. I do have about, I think I have three or four seeds left for the August three, probably. And I will refill it if I can at the end of the August, but let's see. I have a very s small number every month that I can take. Okay, wow, hour and 45 minutes, right? Nice live streaming, I guess, just a second. Oh, Sakura, what's going on? One second, maybe. Wait, there we go. Okay. Thank you so much for the coming to live. So, yeah. <laughs> Kanda. Thank you so much for coming to the Sashiko live streaming on Thursday night. Um, if you are new to Sashiko, of course, you can jump into my online class and I can offer the you know list of things i want to follow so you can save some time but at the same time um please keep reading the instagram as well as the live streaming is great but it's not really summarized well it's my mum mumbling and it is very 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 important to learn the sort of the figure the form of sashiko i hope that you can have time to watch the live streaming to understand that but at the same time it's not you know specific enough it's not precise enough it's not the teaching or message or i have to modify my uh, message in a way that many people can understand easily that's the sashiko story like um, there's a playlist called sashiko story no probably sashiko story i named sashiko story and they explain these things one by one in based on the questions that I used to receive a lot. So that might help. But at the same time, I'm not really good at the video making. So forgive me for not easy. <laughs> I mean, it's not like, you know, entertainment. But there are some information there. <clears throat> okay, so I will hope I hope to see you next Thursday. Uh, no, yeah, if you're now here, please try to, if you liked it, this one, please put the good button. I do receive some bot or some troll that it, they give me a lot of, not a lot of, a lot of is, not, they don't give me a lot, but often, almost every time, the negative one. So in order to keep the channel health, your good button is very much appreciated, so... Besides that, I hope you can find, not a find, you can enjoy your sashiko, and I'll see you next time.